Because of the corrupt Bulgarian government, my car was almost flooded and totaled. And I was one of the lucky ones. The Bulgarian government is very corrupt. Especially anything related with the roads. So, the event took place on the Ring Road, one of the most important roads for the city of Sofia. But, because of the corrupt Bulgarian politicians, that wanted, uh, you know, some money in their pockets. They probably took shortcuts and the drainage was obviously not well planned at all. Because the rainstorm that we experienced was not something out of the ordinary for uh, Bulgaria and Sofia. So some context, it was raining all day, but it was not a constant heavy rain. So I was driving home at around midnight when all of a sudden a downpour came out of nowhere and and the visibility was gone as you can see from this video that I ripped off Facebook so I get to my exit uh, it's right here where everything took place uh, uh, this exact exit so I start turning in and all of a sudden a massive wave hits the front well I was the one that was making the wave essentially the road was very flooded. It was flooded enough to get the whole front end of the car underneath water. So at that point, I immediately turned back onto the not so flooded area of the road. At the same time, trying to keep the car from dying because if it dies there, it would not be epic. I successfully did not get stranded, but it was quite obvious that the car had a drink or two. After that, I got to a safe place to stop the car. Uh, there was a lot of smoke coming from underneath the hood from all of the water that, that was boiling and evaporating. I went to open up the hood so the electronics don't get extra damage from all the steam. At that point the car was still running but it was running rough. Plus I gave it you know the beans twice, I gave it gas twice and uh, it shut off after that but it immediately restarted so there was still hope that the car was well okay-ish. As the rain was starting to calm down, I went outside to look at the, the car to see if there's any exterior damage. And that's when I noticed that the front plate was gone. With the front plate was half of the bumper trim and my bumper grill. And on the rear bumper, the diffuser was almost completely off as well. But the biggest issue was that the car's plate was gone. And if I did not find the plate, I would need to re-register the car. As we've well established, anything related to the Bulgarian government is not good and it's not efficient. So I wanted to avoid that at any cost. So at that point, I returned back to the disaster area, to the incident area, hoping to find my plate. But to my dismay, it was no longer just two lanes of river. Now the whole side of the road was a river. All five lanes of the ring road were a river. Not only that, but it was starting to spill over to the other side and forming a separate river. You can imagine just how bad the drainage is for it to completely flood five lanes plus. How does that happen? The obvious answer, Bulgarian politicians, thank you very much. So when I returned, there was a car stuck in the middle of the newly formed ring road river that guy's the reason why I say I'm one of the lucky ones because he was definitely not lucky. And there was a massive traffic jam starting to build up because, well, where are the cars going to go? You can't really go forward. All of the lanes are now part of the new Ring Road River. So I start wading through the waist high water looking for my plate. The issue is that the water was very, very dirty, it was mud water. So you couldn't really see anything underneath the water, so it was I was just kicking my feet, hoping I hit on something that might resemble a plate. I don't know what I was intending on doing if I did find the plate, because I did not find the plate that night. The water was over a meter deep, a meter deep, on, I can't even, I don't know how I was going to, you know, extract it from the water, but it is what it is. So all in all, I spent an hour sloshing through the muddy water trying to find my plate. In the end, like I said, I did not find it, but that night I did successfully find my bumper grill, which was a slight victory. But at that point it was 2 a.m. and I, I decided it was pointless and not worth getting some kind of muddy river disease from this whole situation, and I went home.
So in the morning I went back to the river site, where it was no longer a river, thankfully, to look for my plate. And I spent 30 minutes just walking around the area looking for it, but in the end I still did not manage to find it. Funnily enough, I did find my plate holder still attached to the plastic bumper trim, but no plates in it, sadly, and a fog light trim that I found in a massive trash container that was next to the road. So I was there at morning rush hour, digging two trash right next to the road. At this point, I'm sad, anxious, worried, what am I going to do with the plate situation, when at around 1 p.m. I get a call from an unknown number. I pick up and the dude's like, hey yo, I've got your BMW's number plate. And I'm like, that's great, let's meet up. He's like, all right, fine, and we end the call. Now, after that, I start to realize, wait a minute. First of all, how does he have my number, my phone number? How does he know that the plate's for a BMW? How does he know that that BMW's plate is my plate? I decided not to question the situation and just get my plate. And that's where we're going to pick up the footage that I've been filming throughout the week. I did not film the disassembly of anything because YouTube was not at the forefront of my mind at that moment. But I did film all of the assembly, the cleaning, the drying and the starting of the car. So George appeared out of nowhere to uh, assist. We're going to be checking the filter if there is anything bad or nefarious in it or a uh, yellow sludge. No yellow sludge here. Oil looks... Like oil. Like fresh oil, I guess. <clears throat> Just give it a nice look. Filter looks fine. Uh, one last thing. Under the cap looks fine, so... Looks like oil. It looks like brand new oil because it's almost brand new oil. Yeah. Yep. We're going to be attempting first start of the vehicle. First wet start. First post uh, Guantanamo Bay mm -hmm. start. Guantanamo Bay. Cocktail type thing. You need to connect. Power. You can see the trunk is in fatal, looking fatal right now. Vehicle has power. that it's because of the lack of a mouth that it was so rough it's still missing ever so slightly lots of lights on the dash it's not smoking white so now that the headlights were flooded and I had to well remove the the headlight plastic covers so the headlights can actually dry out uh, I've decided to attempt some of those home remedy fixes on the very yellowed headlight you can see very very yellowed this one not so much these are original AL you can see so these are original headlights uh, headlight uh, covers the supplies that I've got to attempt this job is a clean microfiber clot a window cleaner to in, to do the initial cleaning I've got baking soda I've got vinegar 
and I've got a old tooth brush. So let's see what's gonna happen because this is going to be interesting. I will now attempt the mixing. You know, there is no, there's no definitive guide on such ridiculous things. You know, it seems like a solid amount. It's giving it a nice aggressive reaction. The idea is for this to become like a paste. Yeah, this looks this looks like something that might do something. I didn't expect such a mess. So I just like to take this very dirty brush, but it's quite big, so we might have more effect. Let's do a check if we've achieved anything. I think we have achieved something. It is slightly better. It's still fucked, but it's, I think, better. I don't know, I need to see the videos. For the memes, because they, some people say you can use uh, toothpaste, I'm going to use some toothpaste as well, just for the memes. It's looking ridiculous. It is still yellow, but it's much less yellow than before. I'm going to try my luck with a uh, towel as well. pretty much it. Let's do a final clean. Now, these things also need to be cleaned uh, because, well, you can see well, as you can see, it's there is evidence. It's quite evident that is this is all dirt from the flooding. I'm pretty sure these things need to be cleaned. So this is what I'm going. That's what I'm going to do now. And these these are the insides of the headlights. As you can see, dirty. First off, the bottom part of the hair box. We are here in the guest bathroom. Sorry, didn't mean to flex on you. You can see it's pretty clean. Now time for the intake, for the upper cool scoop intake thing. This one is much less dirty because, well, water really didn't get to here. Upper parts of the intake, again, not too dirty this. And now for the final part, the floor mats, especially the driver floor mats, uh, because I myself was very flooded and when I entered the car, uh, well this thing has obviously seen better days. I want to install the headlights, the headlight covers.
Okay. So, <laughs> forgot this. Uh, Tutorial. This was not planned. <laughs> it's on. Yeah, I think it's pretty... Uh, Obvious the difference in uh, headlights. I mean, headlight uh, lifespan. I actually have a new old filter. Uh, I bought it a year ago, but my filter was over on it, so I didn't change it. But the problem is, it's slightly bigger than my old one. So, so right now we're going to attempt to install it when the airbox is not inside the car. We have finagled it somehow, uh, but you can see there's ever so slightly a gap, and I don't know if that's supposed to be like that. You can see we can squeeze it ever so slightly, and here it's slightly bulged. George, turn on the lights, please. Yeah. Technically speaking, the car is assembled now. I mean, not completely, obviously, quite a few things are missing, but the car is uh, almost assembled. So, the car seems to be running without issues, although we have a new sound that's coming from the, uh, the engine. It is uh, grinding, it's uh, sturgeon, you know? <laughs> it's sturges. I think that's because the, the pulleys Water, everything that moves is currently slightly rusted, so I don't know what I'm, I'm going to do, do about that, but otherwise the car seems fine. We're going to give it a pull in a second, when it gets uh, up to temperature. Going to do a uh, pull to see if it can still move. I don't know, man. Eh, decent. It feels like maybe something's not right. <laughs> maybe I flooded the vano system, and now we don't have. Uh, we're running 1.5 vanos, not the double vanos. Mittier <laughs> vanos. Quite dirty. Thank you. 